In this video, I want to share with you my five favorite pieces of gear that I've acquired in 2020 as a guitarist. This is stuff that was released in that year and that I had purchased in the same year with my own money. Nothing is sponsored here. And I just want to share with you what I really like about them, why I got them in the first place, and some other features that you might find useful. This video is going to be brief, but if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the products I mentioned in this video, you can check out the links in the description for that. Uh, so let's go. The first thing I wanted to mention is the SSL. 2 plus interface. It's a two channel interface. You can power it from the USB port on your computer. There's no external power supply. It's super simple to use. I do have the 16 channel Focusrite Scarlet over there, but I wanted something portable. My older Focusrite Sapphire recently went out of support. I updated my operating system, I think, in February, and when I tried to use the portable interface I had recently, it just didn't work anymore. So I need to get something new, and this has some incredible preamps. I've A-B'd it with the Scarlet, and to be honest, it just blows it out of the water. So uh, I think this is like 250 or so. They also have a cheaper version for 200, which just has one less headphone preamp. Uh, the sound is incredible. I've been working with a 900 series SSL board. It's the 948 um, at school where I'm doing my master's program. And this sounds every bit as good. Uh, so I'll be creating impulse responses of some of my favorite amps, some of the favorite amps that my friends own, and I'll have that available soon. One of my other favorite pieces of gear uh, that I got a hold of this year was the Boss OC5. It was released in September, I believe. And I've been a huge fan of the OC3 in the last like five years that I've been using it. This thing has been absolutely essential for me playing solo gigs. It'll act basically in place of a bass player. It'll never fully replace a bass player, uh, but you can use this to separate the signal, um, you know, designate what notes you want to pitch shift down the octave and which ones you want to leave at pitch. So on a solo gig or a gig where you're backing up a singer or a single horn player, uh, you can make your sound much wider. The OC3 was a great design and the OC5 much improved on it with true lowest note recognition. I have a full video on that. The next one on the list is the Vox Mystic Edge. Uh, it's part of the Vox Valve Energy series. I didn't have enough money to buy all four of them, but I did try all four of them and they are incredible. There's a little tube in here. It's using Korg's new micro tube, or they call it new tube technology. I think it was released at 2020 NAM in January uh, before the world ended and it's it's just super unique. So I tried the steel string version of it as well, the Dumble style version, but I decided on keeping this since I already have a steel string style pedal that I really like. Now one of the really cool ways that I found to use this pedal uh, is to switch between the different mode settings up top. This pedal can serve as just a standard overdrive pedal on your rig where you can take a nice, clean, warm sounding amp like that Supro and kind of influence an AC30 kind of Vox style chimey overdriven tone to it. Uh, it'll work in the standard setting as a stomp box. If you switch it to pre, it'll work as the preamp section of an amplifier. So for this purpose, we would be running directly into the effects return of an amp like the Mesa Boogie and we'd be bypassing the preamp section entirely. And then lastly, it can actually operate with a cab simulation on it. So this will work for going direct, it'll work for going into the effects loop of an amp, or it'll work just as a normal stomp box for overdrive and stuff. Really, really versatile, and I, I love that you have the, the option to switch between all these different purposes just with the flip of a switch here. Now this list of mine is in no particular order, uh, but if there's any products that you've gotten lately, guitar related or just music related in general stuff uh, that you got this year, whether it was released this year or prior to that, I'd love to hear about it. Please share it with me down below. The next one I wanted to mention is the Morningstar MC8. It's a MIDI controller. It's really open sandbox. This one is stuck on my pedal board and I've just been spending a lot of time lately learning how to program it. It's pretty intuitive, uh, but it can be a time consuming process to program. It's like I said, it's open sandbox, so there's a lot of different ways you can use it. I've been really trying to explore and find the one that suits my style of playing. The MC6 was released years ago, and I think the industry really fell in love with it. So Morningstar released the MC8, slightly bigger version with two more foot switches on it, and more inputs for expression or outputs for uh, whatever else you decide to use it for. It's really versatile, and I think on this channel I might have one or two videos coming out in the future. Uh, that's stuck on my pedal board, and so is the HX Stomp and the Chucks. DC7, which we'll get to in a second. I thought I might throw in an honorable mention for the HX Stomp. It was released in 2017. However, in 2020, we got two major updates to it entirely for free. In, I, th I think it was end of April or beginning of May, we had 2.9, which added a bunch of new amps and pedals and 
even more expanded control of the unit. And then more recently in November, we had update 3.0, which was even bigger. So although it wasn't a new product in 2020, we did get a bunch of new free software for it. Uh, and this will lead me to my last product here to mention, the Chuck's DC7 and CAE power supplies. Uh, I believe they were released in 2020, don't quote me on that, but they've just been super versatile and the whole design is really great. It's basically a modular system. So you buy the DC7, uh, it's got seven outputs on it that can output up to 660 milliamps each. Uh, it can flip between 9 volt, 12 volt, 18 volt, and it also has a little LED there that shows you how much of that power consumption you're using. So from the DC7, if those seven outputs aren't enough, uh, you can start daisy chaining either the C8E or I believe it's called the C4, uh, eight outputs or four outputs, and from there you can just keep expanding the larger you need to make your pedal board uh, powered as much as possible. It also has a really convenient USB power output. So for example, I could have used that for my MC8 if I wanted to. That pedal has the ability to be powered through the USB port on it. But I actually chose to route it to the patch bay on my pedal board. And this will be used to charge a tablet or whatever else I might be using on the gig. So there it is, my favorite gear purchases of 2020. I hope you dug the video. I hope you have a great year. I hope it's better than the last one. Stay positive. This is Zuri, my other favorite gear purchase of 2020, and uh, we'll see you in the new year. Take care.